Yo, what up YouTube? Today we're talking about CSS floats. Now, often confusing, this CSS property is fundamental to understanding modern CSS layout. Now, as an added bonus, I'll be using this Speech Jammer app to make things a little bit more fun. This is CSS floats explained on a Speech Jammer. This is CSS floats explained on a Speech Jammer. Er. So let's now, now talk about floats. Floats are an interesting CSS as, as property because they're not often used what they were intended intended for. For now they eventually became a, a staple in CSS layout strategy, but they were initially intended for like a lay, layout flare, a layout flare. Let me show you what I when, let me show you what I mean. I have a paragraph here with an image in the front. Now you can see the this image lines up with the BS uh, baseline with the text. <laughs> All images by default are inline display types, so they would naturally be treated like another character uh, in this string of text. Now the, now the idea behind CSS floats is to enable you to literally float this uh, object to the left or the right, whichever you choose, and have the text kind of stylishly float, like float up around it, creating a kind of visual style. See, I float left, this is how it works out. And right here, uh, there, you see it floated off to the right, just as you expected. <laughs> and now this text, that floats up around the object is a big deal. You notice that everything is moving up, up and moves around the float object floating up. The floating object pushing to the left or the right a bit, depending on the direction we choose. Are they, yes. Now you can see when we look at the when they look at the HTML markup that the first element in the HTML is leading is leading the float. If I float left, it's leading the float left. If I choose to float right, it's the furthest all the way to the right, meaning that it's leading the float. Whew. Okay, this is difficult. <laughs> now let's talk about how to use floats with layouts. Ah, you don't have to float only H uh, uh, images. You can float other HTML objects like containers. As an example, if I float two paragraphs left, they hear they find them. If I float these two paragraphs here, they themselves are floated left and create a type of column system. Now, this is important in order to float the autumn's, uh, uh, objects left and have them look like you know columns. We need to have a defined width and the widths need to make sure that there's enough space left over on the road that the other column can literally float up next to it. A few years ago, some really smart CSS developers noticed that you can float two objects side by side and they thought, hey, what a great way to, way to make a grid. So this is one of the most common ways that CSS grid systems work. 
silica mieling. One of the earliest and most widely used grid system was some was this um, was the 960 grid system. This library came out a few years ago and was used all over the place. But since but since then, since the 960 grid system system that has led ways to more advanced systems. Some of them were uh, flexible, some were based on the golden ratio show, and more recent, like you, more recently, like you would notice in the Twitter bootstrap, grid systems have become um, responsive, meaning that they will adapt like a four column would turn into a three and a two depending on the uh, device that you're looking on or the screens, the width available to it. Okay, that should do it for, I'm gonna turn this off. Oh my gosh. Okay, that should do it for flows today. Next week, we're gonna take a deeper look at grids themselves. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends and get your moms to subscribe down below. Holla back if you feel me.